coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson and I'm your host on Teaching with Board Games. Here today to talk about Gaslands by Osprey Games. So Gaslands is a tabletop miniatures game. Now I say miniatures, but it's not exactly miniatures like you'd be buying from games workshops and things like that. What's beautiful about Gaslands is that it's a, it's an apocalyptic setting. So it's a the dark future sort of thing. And it's, it's kind of like Mad Max where you're driving cars around and the cars are, uh, can be racing, can be battling, can be doing a number of different objectives depending on the mission that you set up to play with. And the cars that you're using will be ones that you can supply yourself from your handy collection of Hot Wheels vehicles or Matchbox or whatever brand of you know car that you have. You can literally use any of them in the thing because these would be the scale that you're using. Now you can take them straight out of the package and use them like this or you can get a bit creative with them like I've done here. And I'll show close-ups of these later. But this is a you know, a car that I've painted and converted for the thing, uh, as well as this one. I call this one the Mantis, because it has these hook things here, which count as extra rams for the front and a gun on the top there. So a lot of opportunities to be creative with this, uh, but you're using Hot Wheels cars for it. And I would also like to mention that Gaslands, while currently it's in this hardcover edition called Gaslands Refueled, I believe that Osprey is still selling the original book, which is the original Gaslands, and you can get this one either as the soft cover book or as a PDF, so or both, which is what I did, uh, to have access to it on my computer if I want to sort of quickly look something up. Uh, and, uh, you know, also for sharing the book around, you know, if somebody's using the book, I can look up something on my phone. So I just, I like to have that as well. And it wasn't that much more for it to, for the combo of the PDF with the book. So you have some different options here. The, the refueled one is, has extra rules and is the, you know, would be more advanced, but if you're wanting to keep it simple, then maybe just going with the first gas lens book, maybe the way for you. All right, let's take it to the report card and I'll tell you what I think of this game. So look at the number of players for Gaslands. I'm going to give it a B plus. It um, plays between two to, you know, any number of players really, but really I'd say, you know, anything more than six. Even six is going to be a, you know, a long game just because the necessity of trying to get around all those people. I think at its heart, it's best at a two to four player game. And so, you know, with the options to go above that is why I give it the B plus. But really it's, uh, like I say, two to four would be my a sweet spot for the game. For learning, I'm going to give the game a B plus. Uh, there is a lot of things that are happening in this game, which is the kind of game that, to me, is what brought my math skills out. Because uh, you know, through games like this, where you're building teams and you have calculations of, you know, each car costs this much. While I'm adding these, you know, maybe some ramps to the car, some extra armor plating. That, uh, that costs this now, so then if I have 50 points to spend, well, now I'm, I'm, I've spent this many, so maybe I have like 27 points left. And you're constantly doing quick calculations on things as you play with the numbers to try to create your team that you want to bring. Um, similarly, you know, within the books, there's obviously lots of reading going on in there because you're reading not only the rules on how to play, you'll constantly be referencing the rules as you play to make sure that you're doing things correctly. Uh, but then there's also just all the background histories and things which you want to read about and maybe the different scenarios to find out which ones you might like to play. There's just so much reading to be done in there. So that's another great thing. Plus, there's going to be you know, estimations that you're making. You know, this will become more clear when I show you, when I take it to the table to show how it's played. You're trying to see, well, you know, if I'm making a turn, how, you know, you're having to gauge distances visually, you know, estimating distances without measuring it first. It's just a good skill to be developing through the play of this game. And lastly, there's probability because you're using dice to determine your actions each turn, what you're going to be able to do, how you're moving, and what you're going to be able to do based on the dice that are rolled. You, but you also have options sometimes to re-roll the dice um, with some penalty. So is, is it worth the risk to try and go for better rolls? So that, there's that aspect of it as well. So a lot of different things happening here, 
which is why I give it the B+. For fun, I give the game an A+. I mean, this game is amazing. It is so much fun. And it's one of these games, too, that really, in my mind, you know, when I play with my friends, like, it's not one that we, like, take super seriously. It's just, it's a game that we play just for some, just a quick fun thing. You know, we, nobody should be trying to get too competitive or too hung up on things. It's just mayhem. It's absolute mayhem as the cars are driving around and crashing into each other and smashing into walls and things as you're trying to make a turn. You miscalculate the the turn it's just it's amazing it's a fun fun game and everybody i've played with has always had a great time with it so to my mind it's one of the most fun games i've played and so for that reason absolutely a plus for time i'm going to give the game a c um the game actually can go a little longer than sometimes you might think because you know you're just putting things down like templates to measure and then you're moving you're rolling some dice but as things go and you're trying to calculate things it, it sometimes takes a little longer than you might expect if you're going to be playing this one in like a school setting this would definitely be something you'd have to be playing before or after school it wouldn't be something you could play in a period or in a recess or anything like that this would be the kind of thing like if you're making like a gas lines club at school this would be definitely something you could do but it would have to be something that you would allot a, a larger block of time for because the clean setup and the cleanup is going to be one thing to keep in mind which isn't going to be so bad but it is that play of the game and again depending on the number of players you have it is going to greatly impact um, exponentially how long the game is going to take a two-player game is going to be super quick whereas a game even with four players is going to take more than twice as long so just really something to keep in mind when you're uh, factoring in time for this one and for cost I'm going to give the game a question mark I give it a question mark because overall the game the rules themselves like I said are relatively inexpensive you know, to get the rules set but where the cost is going to come in is what you get after that because really once you have that if you have any kinds of cars at home any old uh, car, you can go to a um, like a thrift store and I bought bags which have you know several cars in there like maybe I'm looking for one or two of the cars that are in that bag and the rest I just donate back again but if you want, you could just get a whole big, I've seen big bags of these kinds of cars. You could get that and people could just use those. And in that way, it's relatively inexpensive. But there's other things as well. Like I mentioned, there's special dice that you're going to be using, the special templates you're going to be using. But none of this has to cost you anything. When I first started playing, I took some wooden cubes that I had bought from the dollar store and I wrote the results of the dice onto the six faces of the cubes. And so I had some dice I'd made for myself. And for the templates you use, you could use the, they have uh, in the back of the book here, they have um, the templates on here. So you could photocopy those and, you know, maybe paste them onto some cereal box cardboard or something and use that. Or you could do what I did and you can go for some printed acrylic ones, which cost a little bit more, but they just look nicer. So it's again, all those things in terms of, you know, the cost is going to be what you want to spend on it. Um, so if you want to be going out and buying a bin full of Hot Wheels cars because you get and think, oh, this looks cool and I think I got some good ideas for it, then sure, you can go out and buy those, you know, as many as you want uh, or not. Or you can, you know, print off some really nice acrylic templates for these to, to make it look really nice or you can do it on the cheap with, the, you know, photocopies. Uh, you can make your own dice or you can get the nicer custom made dice so it's all these things you know factoring in and how much do you want to spend on it so it can be very cheap but for the full experience of having all the nice goodies and everything it's it can start to you know it can run as much as you want it to run so one of those things to just keep in mind so i'm really not sure of how to classify the cost because it's depends on the person all right let me take it to the table and i'll show you how this game is played Okay, so here's a setup uh, for a very, very quick game of Gaslands. I have two vehicles here, and I'm not even going to bother with um, the what's on them and things like that. We're just going to treat them as just regular vehicles with, with um, no attachments or anything. So we have uh, two of my favorites, actually. So this is the, the Mantis. Let me just bring Mantis up here. So this is Mantis. And like I said, the paint thing about this is really easier than it looks it's very easy to paint something like that so that's the mantis and then um, I've got the Cyclops so Cyclops was just some 
recycled materials that I had. I just put them together and voila, I've got that. And this is actually magnet magnetized so it can spin. So there's a magnet in there. Now it doesn't fall out and uh, it can spin. So yeah, quite, quite pleased with that one. So it's the pickup truck versus a car. They're going to race and they have to get through this thing. And you can see the arrows are pointing that way. So the these would be things I purchased off of Etsy. So these are pieces I purchased from Etsy. So they got the, the starting gates with the with the things. Oops, this should be turned around. So they're coming out this way. So the arrows show the way that they have to cross over. Uh, these are things I purchased from another seller on Etsy. So there's some storage containers, shipping containers to uh, just provide some, some thematic scenery. I got dice made up. So this is the dice I made up first. So I just, like I said, took the wooden cubes and I put the different results on there. So it works just as well. And then I have my templates up there. So instead of printing out the paper ones, I got these. So this is wood that was um, laser burned with the um, different things. And I'll explain what these symbols and everything mean in just a moment. So what's going to happen with the game is uh, you're starting off in a first year. Each person is going to, you're going to determine first player. And um, so whoever has the most shifts, so we'll roll for the car. The car has uh, two shifts, and then the truck has only one shift. So the car is going to take the first turn, and the so that now both cars are going to both vehicles are going to be starting in first gear. So in first gear, you have certain uh, limitations as to what you can and cannot do. So for example, going on a long straight. This shows you here which gears it's available in. So it's highlighting the five and the six because it's only available in gear five or gear six. Now cars can go up to gear five. Trucks can only go up to gear four, uh, but we'll probably won't get that far in the game. But so that you, you're going to choose one of these things. And once you have picked up a template, then you have to use that template. So this is where I'm saying you have to guess what you're going to be doing. So the car could come through here and snake around like this, but maybe what I'll do is I'll just, I'll make the car do a hard turn now and then have like a straight path. So maybe we'll get to the long straight. So looking at the, so how much of a turn do I want to be making there? Like a gentle turn, I don't think is going to be enough. Um, a hard turn perhaps. I don't think it needs to do a hairpin. A hairpin is going to create problems. So let's go for a hard turn. So then you take this template and you're going to put it, now I've glued my wheels down here so they don't um, move. So I touch that to the wheels, that's always my rule, that it touches the wheels. So that, was, that looks like a good maneuver there. So it's going there and it's showing me where the car is going to end up. So this now the back wheels will touch this end when it finishes its turn. So with this, in first gear, I, it has a shift symbol. I'll show you what that looks like with this one. So it has this symbol here, which means shift, that means hazards. And you don't want to be collecting hazards. Well, sometimes you do, but hazards are going to wipe you out. So right now we don't want hazards. Now the car has a handling of three. So I can roll up to three dice to do what I want to do. Now I'm in first gear and we're in the first gear round. If I do not go to second gear, then I'm going to be done for the rest of the turn because this will then go to the second gear, the third gear, and so on. Uh, so I need to make sure that I at least shift up once. Now I do have one shift there, so that can allow me to shift up. So that is a terrible roll. So slide, slide, and a hazard. So I'm going to take one hazard. So I'm gonna take one hazard token. I'm gonna to put it on the car. Once per turn, you can do that for a re-roll. You can re-roll as many of the dice as you want to, and I'll re-roll them all. And that's much better. So I have shift, shift, and a spin. So what that means then, I can complete my turn here. So my car comes over here, and I then have the two shifts and a spin. So with the one shift, I'm going to shift up into second gear. So I show that by putting a two here to show now I'm in second gear. I suppose I can put this one here to show that one's in the first gear currently. Oops. So I'm shifting up to second gear, so that's with one shift. Now that gives me a hazard. So with, the, with that shift, I'm going to take away that hazard. So I'm just remaining with the one hazard. And then I'm going to spin. Now the spin means that you can spin from the center any 
up to 90 degrees. So I'm going to I'm going to angle it a bit so now I can maybe start to get around that turn a little easier. But that gives me one more hazard. If I get six hazards, if I'm at the ending my turn with six hazards, then my car is going to wipe out. All right, so the pickup truck is going to go. Now the pickup truck is, knows it's not going to make it through there. So we'll go maybe a medium straight. So we just put that down. Now the pickup truck only has a handling of two. It's not as you know easy to handle as a car. So we roll the two dice and two shifts, perfect. So I get also one shift from the thing here. So what's going to happen is I'm going to shift up to, to third gear. So I'm going to use both of these to shift up to third gear, which gives me two hazards. And then using the shift from my template, I'm going to take away one of those. So now I complete my movement and my truck is up here. Okay. Now both sides have made one turn. So now it'll be the next one to go, it'll be going back to the car and the car is going to have to decide what it's going to do. So it's going to maybe make a, a gentle turn. So it makes a gentle turn. And now that, oh, now this is now in the second gear phase and the car is in second gear, so it can go, but now it's going to need to gear up to the third gear if I want to be able to go in the next turn as well. All right, so we're, uh, the car is going to roll and it gets a shift, shift, slide. Now with the shift, I can cancel the slide, but I'm not going to do that because I, I just want to show you what happens with the slide. So the car is going to slide and what you do with the slide is you take this slide token and every one of these templates, it has a little notch somewhere in it and that's where the slide token is going to go. So the slide token is actually going to send the car slamming sideways into the container here. So the car kind of skidded out there, hits the side, and now you would take damage from that. So the car, um, so he would, so a shift, shift, slide. So he's gonna shift up to third gear and cancel the hazard. He's going to take hazards from hitting the thing, and then you're gonna roll damage to see if the car is getting damaged. So I'm going to leave a lot of that stuff in terms of like how you roll for damage and how you roll to attack and things like that up to you. I just wanted to give you a very, very basic sense of how this works on in terms of the movement and things like that. So you can start to see the, the game on how it would be played. If you want to find out more, there are a lot of videos out there which talk about very specifically break it down for you on how to play the game. So I would recommend looking at something like that rather than here. I just want to give you a sense of the game so that you can maybe see if yeah, maybe this is a good fit for you and for your needs. And that is how you play Gaslands. So Gaslands is not a game which I would recommend for your typical classroom setting. This is the kind of game which is either going to be played in a some sort of club, you know, in before or after school, or something that you're going to play at home, whether with your kids or as a family or however you want to do it. So while this is a great game, this isn't one that is going to be played as a regular, in a regular classroom setting. And not all games I review are games that are suitable for classroom settings. This is another example of one like that. So, but there is still a lot of good learning to be taking place in this game and this is why i wanted to include this one because i think it is such a wonderful game it is so accessible to people for different ways that you could be using it like i was saying for the just developing all those math skills and the reading skills but also the the the, the creative outlet that it you know, allows to be able to be painting and creating these different vehicles and it's actually a lot easier than it looks and i can always you know if you if you're curious i can i can send you to some video tutorials of how to paint the cars because it's it's really not hard it's really quite easy you just have to know the techniques on how to do it so thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video if you are new to this channel then what i'm doing is i'm putting out content on a weekly basis where i talk about gamification game-based learning i'm reviewing games such as gaslands and other board games which are i feel of educational value and sharing with you on how to maybe implement those into your classroom 
whether you, or how to use them as an education uh, or how to use them as an educational tool if you're a parent at home wanting to use board games in this capacity. I am a teacher of 20 years experience with the Peel District School Board and I've always believed in gamification and the power of games and I my mantra is that I teach the way I wish I was taught. I feel I would have been a much better student when I was younger if I had learned through gamification so I try to make sure I apply this as much as possible in my own uh, classroom and through my own teaching and then helping to share what I have learned with you so that we can all use this great this great resource. If you have any questions about anything I've talked about in today's video or have any other ideas for games or things you might like me to review, please leave me a message in the comments section below. I do love to hit, hear from the viewers. And while you're down there, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. It really does help. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Until next time, I'm Craig Thompson Wood, your host on Teaching with Board Games, saying thanks for coming to the classroom. Are you coming back to school?